Okay, you guys came here to hear from Eric, which I'll let him tell this story. I just wanted to chime in here, guys, say thank you for your viewership. Thank you for coming here. Um, it really means a ton. And stay tuned for more stories like this because we're going to tell some here in, uh, in 2023. We've got some exciting videos coming out. We'll just say that. Um, so stay tuned. Subscribe. I know <laughs> everybody says that, but the purpose for subscriptions, guys, I want to make these videos for free. Um, I didn't charge Eric to do this. I'm not being paid by PMB to do this. I want to do these for free. So if you can help me do this for free and make videos for people, that is a dream that I want to achieve. I mean, to do what you love and not have to charge for it. Just do it because you love and you can give and it's something you can do. I can't imagine anything more worth chasing than that. And I have to chase it this year. So if you could subscribe, share, do that. I want to tell more stories and I want to tell them for free if I can, um, because I got a mortgage. I, I got a wife to support and she's amazing and kicking butt and I want to give her all I can. But anyway, guys, thank you. Enough of me talking. Let's listen to Eric. I'm Eric Shea. I restore vintage Porsches and vintage brake calipers. The first vehicle I ever worked on was my, uh, well, the first one I ever worked on was my father's Volkswagen Beetle. Um, the first one that I had that I restored, by that time, I ended up getting my own Volkswagen Beetle. It was a 63 Turk. Um, and I had to put fender flares on it. I had to lower it. I had to do the cow look and all that kind of stuff. This was back in 84 or 85. I had majored in music in high school and um, I went on to work at a local music store in East Lansing, Michigan called Marshall Music. And uh, from there I went on to play in various bands and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. I was, I was going to be a rock star. That part of my life ended when... Um, Liquor liability laws hit, actually, believe it or not. Um, uh, mothers Against Drunk Driving kind of came out and really pushed for liquor liability laws. The club owners, instead of paying the band six, $7,000, they ended up having to pay insurance. When the live music scene started to fall apart, I started to look elsewhere in the music industry uh, for employment and things to do. So. One of the naturals when you live in mid-Michigan, there's, there's a couple big cities around, like one is Detroit, and Detroit wasn't really happening at that time, and the other was Chicago, and Chicago was really happening at that time. So when I had my first weekend off, I went to Chicago, and I, I did all the things you're supposed to do in Chicago for that weekend. We just had a blast. And on the way back to Michigan, I. I, I thought of all the places I could work in the music industry. So I put, um, I put out about five resumes and I got four yeses back. So I moved to Chicago. By the time that started to wind down in my career, I had kind of done everything in the music industry. So I had started working at a music store. I played in bands, toured, uh, worked wholesale worked for guitar companies, amplifier companies, had my own rep firm. I'd kind of done it all. And my other passion, I always say that, um, that I'm blessed because uh, my passion has been music and vintage Porsches. You know, because of the Volkswagen influence, because that was my first car, um, the, the Porsches came to me naturally, and I, I think they kind of came to me organically the way, the way they should, so to speak, you know. Um, my first go was a, was a 914, of course. I, I saw the car and I thought, well, this is cool. It's got a Volkswagen engine in it. I can, I can rebuild that. Um, I thought it's got two trunks. That's really cool. You can put a lot of luggage in here and drive across the country. Got four-wheel disc brakes and you know, mid-engine, like, this is killer. So um, it, was, it was quirky styling for sure, and I, I still think it is, but I like it, you know, and I've, I've grown, grown to, to love the car. Um, so 
when I was done, like I said, in the, in the music industry, I just naturally started to go over here. And I actually kind of equate the two. I, I think the two are very, very similar. A 57 Stratocaster is the same thing as, as like a, a 911 RS. Um, it's a passion item. It's, it's something that people just lust for, you know. They, they lust for this old vintage guitar or they lust after this old vintage car. And so I thought the two industries in my head were almost identical. It's really kind of funny. But I took my passion for music and I just flipped the coin and I turned it into my passion for vintage Porsches. And uh, I started restoring brake calipers in my, in my garage. After I restored the car, I got to know the plater when I had my latches plated and things like that. When you're restoring a car, you want to have a lot of your stuff plated, replated. And somebody said, well, who, who knows how to rebuild these, these weird 914 rear calipers? They have the integrated handbrake in them. And nobody really chimed in. Nobody really had an answer. It was a guy online doing, doing Ferrari calipers. We had a little, a little bit of a tutorial on how to do it. And I thought, well, I can take these to my plater and make them like really shiny and everything. And I, I thought that was really, really cool. I put these up for sale, these, I put these calipers, these 914 rear calipers up for sale on 914world.com in the classified section and in 15 minutes, you know, they were sold and 15 minutes later I, I've got an order for six more. And it was really kind of cool because um, back then the community was kind of a, uh, we, we called ourselves CSOBs, you know, cheap son of a bitches. Everybody would, you know, hey, I got a, I got a bin full of calipers, you know, if, if I give you like 12 calipers, will you do a pair for me? It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so, you know. And I, so I made a pair of calipers for this person and that person and this guy. And pretty soon I've got three bins full of core calipers and I'm in business. When I was up on stage playing music, I was making people happy and that was like, really, really cool to see people dancing and cheering and having a great time, you know? And I wanted to do that here. When I sent my first set of calipers off to a guy, they would open the box and they would go, I, I don't want to put them on my car, I want to put them on my coffee table. That was a big moment for me, you know? That was a big, I'm making somebody happy again. There's people out there that go, what? People send you brake calipers off their car? Yeah, they do. Um, how weird is that? You know, people sending brake calipers across the country, across the world. We get calipers from, we've gotten calipers from China. We've gotten calipers from Russia. We've gotten calipers from Japan. We've gotten calipers from Germany and everywhere. How weird is that that somebody will box their calipers off and send them across the world, you know, to this little place here and have us restore them? So it's, a, it's um, you know, the measure of success, I think, is, is how much you're serving the industry. That's kind of the mantra, is um, do big things and do them well. You know, serve the industry. All right, thank you, Eric, so much for telling your story. Thank you to the whole PMB performance team. You guys are rock stars. Uh, guys, please like and share this video. Share it with somebody who's got an incredible story to tell and have them reach out to me. Uh, my Instagram is at Tanner B. Seymour, uh, so you can find me there. Just shoot me a direct message. I'd love to tell some more stories, and again, I'd love to tell them for free. That's, that's what I'm trying to do here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one, and uh, uh, what's a Porsche guy saying? Stay classy. Stay Porsche. There we go.